Okay, so let's take a look at how to do question number four, where we're giving an interval of, um, of, a, of a set of values uh, which are related to um, the normal distribution curve, and we want to find a, one of the missing endpoints, essentially. So it's a little bit confusing because the way they have presented it, but I will draw a picture just so that we can clarify it. So we have something here called a random variable. Random variable is just um, is just a placeholder value like X um, to represent um, a set of values which are going to be normally distributed, which meaning it's going to follow a standard distribution curve. So if we look at question A, the way we want to visualize this question is we've, we've got our curve. Okay, so we draw our standard distribution curve. We know the mean is 12 and we have a standard deviation of 3.1. So right away, we should mark our mean, which is 12. That's gonna be our 50% point. Okay, and the curve and our standard deviation is 3.1. So what we wanna look for here is we need to find a variable, okay, or a value for the, uh, the variable G. Okay, so this is one of the endpoints where if we have a set of given values from this unknown number G all the way up to 17.8, that is gonna capture 87% or 0.8763 of the curve, okay? So we have to imagine um, a distribution that looks like this. So 17.8 is quite, quite far from 12, so it's gonna be a little further down the curve here, so I'm gonna mark that as one of our endpoints. Okay, and then the other endpoint, we don't know where it is, so that is going to be the letter G. Okay, so if I use a different color here, okay, what we have is this 87.63 represents this shaded space between this unknown number and um, up to 17.8. Okay, so I'm just going to mark this in as 0 0.8763. Okay, so this is what the picture is, is, this is what the question is asking for. Right now you want to know what is the value here for G. Okay, so to do this, um, it's going to require a few steps. But the way, the first thing we have to do is we, we have two functions um, to work with. Okay, we have the norm CDF function. Okay, and norm CDF means that when we supply an area, or we give an area of a range, we are able to calculate, um, uh, sorry, if we are given an interval of values, like from 12 to 17.8, we can calculate what the percent um, or the probability is under the, the normal curve, okay, given that interval, okay? And then there's another function that's related to this, it's the actual inverse, which is called inverse norm, and this is where if we are given the area that we, we know or that we've calculated under the curve, we can then find out what is the value along this, the x-axis here or the item that we're measuring. So inverse norm is the function that we're ultimately going to use to find this value for g. Okay, But what we can't do directly is because the distribution curve essentially starts at negative infinity, or we'll just kind of say zero, right? So zero is like somewhere out here. And then it goes to essentially positive infinity, right? So we have a, um, a large number that goes way, way out to the edge, right? One times 10 to the 99. We're, we're trying to figure out what is the, um, you know, the area under this, what 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 number is going to be for that area under the curve, right? So the way we're going to look at this is, after, we'll divide this up into a couple of questions here. First thing we're going to do is we need to find the percent or the area, okay? So the percent or the area, okay, up to 17.8, okay? Because we, we know the interval from G to 17.8, but we need to calculate it starting from zero to 17.8. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna use our norm CDF function. Okay, and we're not gonna use zero, but we're gonna use negative one times 10 to the 99, up to 17.8. 
and then we have our mean and our standard deviation. So when we calculate this number, we, we see that the area under the curve from that extreme range up to 17.8 is 0.9693. So I'm gonna just take these to four decimals um, just so that we have a little bit of um, accuracy with the numbers when we're carrying them. So this essentially means 96 or 97% coverage, okay, starting from zero. But we're not really, we really don't want to know that whole area because what we're also taking account in, and I'll just shade this part into green here, is we're actually accounting for the part right here. We're capturing that little part up to the number that's represented by G. So how could we figure out what is this green part for the area? Because that's what we're kind of interested in. Okay, we were given this interval and we know the whole interval from zero all the way to 17.8 is 97, but I just wanna know what is the area from say zero up to um, the value for the letter G, which is the part in green. Okay, so to do that, we just need to do a simple subtraction. Okay, so we know the whole area is point, well, let me, I'll just, I'll just make a little notation here. We're gonna find the area up to G. Okay, so we need to calculate that percent or that probability. So we know the whole area is 0.9693. Okay, and we know the chunk between G and 17.8 is given by 0.8763. So if we were to subtract these two numbers, 8763, okay, that would be the part that we see shaded in green. So it's just a small amount, right? So you think about 96% or 97%, take away 88%, what are we left with? About 0 0.0930, which is about 9%. So that's the part that's shaded in green. Okay, so that is the area that's in green. So if we know that this part here is 0 0.09, three zero, then we should be able to plug in that value into our second function, the inverse norm, because then that will let us calculate what that particular value of G should be. So we would simply do the last step here is we need to take the inverse norm function. Okay. And we know the area that we're capturing. The area that we're capturing is just the 9%. So again, you gotta put it in as a decimal. So it's 0 0.09 and then three zero. Okay, and then we take the mean and we take the standard deviation, just like the other one. But instead of um, us calculating the area now, because that's what we're inputting in, we're gonna calculate the value on that X axis, which is point G. So this will give us a value of 7.90. So that means this is our missing value. 7.90. That means if we take this variable and we shade in the area between 7.90 and 17.8, we will cover 87.63% of the distribution. Okay, so a little bit more involved to do. What you first have to do is find the total area up to one of the endpoints and then subtract the shaded area from that to find the remaining or the missing chunk of the area. And then you put that missing chunk of the area into the inverse norm function to find the lower boundary point that, um, that, that it represents. Okay, so that's how you would do question A.